Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're going to talk about the SR25. This weapon is, in my opinion, the next step along from the RFB when it comes to semi-auto DMR type guns, which are dominating the meta right now in EFT. With the same big bullets as its little cousin, but with the ability to get very decent stats, the SR25 is definitely a contender for one of the most effective weapons at a reasonable price with moderate trader levels right now. Alright, so jumping in, if you're a 762 NATO enjoyer, when should we move up from the RFB? As the ultimate budget 762 slinger in 1212, I've argued previously that this weapon has taken over from the hunter in many ways as best bang for buck once you unlock it at Skier 2 ever since durability was introduced into the game and given it only costs 55k to buy a brand new one, it's a very compelling choice. However, this cheapness does come with some downsides which is primarily the lack of modding options. This is doubled up on the RFB by virtue of it being a bullpup, which in Tarkov prevents it from achieving low levels of recoil. The SR25 on the other hand is easy to mod straight away once you have Peacekeeper 3, which is unlocked at level 23 and 0.3 rep. Until you get to this stage, I highly advise continuing to use the RFB or just other weapons entirely as you won't get the most out of the SR25 unless you can access more efficient parts on the traders. Given that these mods are often very expensive on the flea market when buying from other players, I really do try to restrict my purchasing from the traders only, except for the actual base guns themselves. At around $928 from Peacekeeper 3, the SR25's base cost is pretty high, but is much cheaper on the flea market, ranging from 70 to 90k, of which they're usually plenty with 100% durability. As you can see from the stock version, the rails and layout are similar to how we would mod an M4, so if you've seen my guides on those type of weapon builds then this will feel somewhat familiar which is really nice. Clearly the SR25 costs more than the RFB to begin with, and with stock stats of 54 ergo and 138 recoil versus 49 ergo and 159 recoil of the RFB, this is understandable. However, what we're also paying for here is the ability to mod it extensively. As we know, the recoil mods in Tarkov take effect on the base recoil, i.e. the recoil stat on the weapon with no mods at all totally stripped back. The fact that bullpups have no separate stock in EFT means that the benefits of the stock are incorporated into the base recoil of the weapon, which means that other attachments have less effect overall when used. You can see this with the RFB's base being 173 and the SR's being 255. This is actually an advantage for the SR in the end because the stock has its own separate stats that the RFB doesn't get because it's part of the base recoil number. The absolute lowest we can get an RFB down to is 109 for this reason, with the RK2 and the Knight's Armament Break and Suppressor, but this leads to 16 ergonomics which is pretty nasty. On the other hand, we can get here fairly easily with the SR through a few cheap mods unsuppressed. With the Atlas Break, the AFG M-Lock and the Chris Stock which are all pretty good bang for buck attachments, this gets us to 64 ergonomics and 110 recoil. But if you're going to be spending 35 to 40k on mods, on top of a weapon that costs approximately 80,000, unless the ergo is really your thing then you're probably aiming for something a little bit better. The absolute lowest recoil that you can get to is 46, which as usual requires level 4 traders, featuring the longest barrel at 20 inch, the knight's armament muzzle brake kit and suppressor combo, and some old favourites that we've seen before which is the RK2 foregrip and the PRS Gen 3 stock paired with an advanced tube. But there is one interesting thing to note here which is that the RSAS handguard was made compatible with the SR and removed from the M4 in the recent past. This makes it the best handguard for the weapon and also allows you to attach the best gas block, the JP Enterprises Gas System 6, that normally doesn't fit with most of the other handguards and has a minus 4% recoil reduction. This is quite a nice jump from the minus 2% of the original stock handguard and tube to minus 6% instead using the RSAS and the JP. So the lowest recoil build gets to 25 ergo and 46 recoil which considering the rounds that this weapon fires is pretty much as laser beam as it gets. You'll retain plenty of sight picture between shots, but clearly this is very expensive, requires high level traders and the ergo is not amazing at only 25. So let's keep that in mind for a little bit later on, but for now if we strip this all the way back to basics to make a sub 100 recoil suppressed version, you can get to 44 ergonomics and 92 recoil with no magazine just by using the T-Lock muzzle combo, the AFG foregrip and the Chris stock. This costs around 60k of mods for a total of 140,000 if the base weapon is 80, but this relies on being able to buy the SIG suppressor cheaply from Skier 4 using the Raven figurine barter which is approximately 30,000 on the flea. If you only have level 3 traders, the next best is likely the Thunderbeast muzzle from Peacekeeper 3 and the Ultra 5 suppressor using the Skier 3 barter for 1 boss cap and 2 leather caps. The prices of these items really varies but it can be as low as 40k for all of them if you can pick up the bosses for 10k and the leather caps for around 15. 
Another option is the best in slot Knight's Armament Muzzle from Mechanic 3 and the Suppressor from Peacekeeper 3, but it's actually around 75k for this pair. If you want to go a bit further and incorporate some of the more meta stuff into this build, my favourite is as follows. From the base SR25 on the fleet, we add a SIG 3 part muzzle brake combo. This is the T lock muzzle, the 2 port brake, and the SIG suppressor using the barter. Next, we use the RSAS and gas block combo that we talked about before, and we can add a Chris Defiance Iron Sight onto it for 2.5k for that extra 1 ergo if you want to. On foregrips, as the handguard is also M lock compatible, we can use the M lock AFGs from Peacekeeper 3 that are great value for money. For pistol grips, the Stark AR from Peacekeeper 4 is a nice addition and doesn't cost that much more than its Peacekeeper 3 versions. For the stock, you can either stick to the Chris for a cheaper price and decent stats, but usually I upgrade to the MOE Carbine and Recoil Pad combo, which provides 3 more recoil reduction and 1 more ergo for about 7k more overall. Finally, we can add the Ambi Charging Handle for another ergonomics point for just under 1.5k. This comes to around 105,000 rubles of mods or 185k in total with the base weapon at 80k on the fleet, providing 49 ergonomics and 82 recoil. If you don't have Peacekeeper 4, replace the Stark AR with the Magpul MOE from Peacekeeper 3 and you can switch out the suppressor for the other options that we discussed earlier, namely the Thunderbeast. Optics wise, you can really use whatever you prefer on this given everything is available. Lasers, cantids, larger scopes with reflex sights mounted inside, Personally, my default would be a cheap laser and attack 30, which I feel much more comfortable using without a canted, as the SR gives nowhere near the recoil of a weapon like the SVD where I had struggled in the past, but it works on the SR even in the relatively budget-friendly modes. Another reason why it's tricky to run the SR25 without Peacekeeper 3 is that you can't access the 20 round magazines until you get to this point. This is yet another reason to keep using the RFB, with its 20 rounders available on Peacekeeper 2. Prior to this, you can only buy the 10 rounders for the SR on Peacekeeper 2, and while it's usable in theory, it is yet another blocker to moving up through the weapon progression sensibly. At Peacekeeper 4, the other slightly better 20 rounder becomes available with improved ergonomics by one point, but it's not going to make or break the weapon by any means. However, for $33 rather than $23, it's inexpensive at just over 1k rubles more per magazine. Finally, let's touch on the ammo. M80 is fine as it cuts through class 4 easily at closer ranges with its starting penetration of 41 and has enough of a grace period so to speak regarding damage and pen drop off to still work well at medium distance. You have to be further away than 200 meters to get a less than 50% chance to penetrate class 4 on the first hit which is the 37 pen threshold and you're still dealing 71 damage which will definitely give your opponent something to worry about. With the ability to buy it at Peacekeeper 2 for approximately 300 rubles per round, this really is the staple ammo in 12-12 for the caliber due to the ammo limitations in general and the lower availability of high-end armors in the game right now. However, with Class 5 armor becoming more popular, you might be looking for something with a bit more punch. This may or may not be the next round up M62 because it's in a bit of a funny place these days progression-wise. With 44 pen, it virtually ensures that you beat Class 4 at any regular range, only getting to 50% pen chance at 300 meters. In close quarters, this gives you a boost towards Class 5 performance, but even with point blank stats, you need 47 pen to hit a 50% first hit pen chance, and M62's penetration only provides a 30% chance, although this is clearly better than M80's 13%. You can only buy this from Peacekeeper 3 after completing Spartor 6, and at around 1,200 rubles per shot is a big step up from M80 in cost. However, note that you do get a recoil reduction from M62, which although is not very big, is nice to have. It's also a tracer, so this can be a double-edged sword, helping you to track the effectiveness of your shots, but it could also give you away too if you're dug in somewhere. Lastly, and I say lastly because M993 is loot only now, so it's very hard to acquire on purpose, M61 is the ultimate endgame round. This is on Peacekeeper 4 after Wet Job 6 for an eye-watering $18 per shot, but the easier way to get a hold of this is through the Workbench 3 craft with 6 red gunpowders and 3 helixes. This is likely to change over time, but grabbing the powders for 30k and the helixes for 15 right now costs a total of 225,000 and nets you 80 rounds of M61, coming to around 2,800 rubles per shot, which is not actually that much more than the trader price. Although this craft takes 16 hours at base crafting skill, M61 cuts through every armor in the game, including class 6. At 100 meters, it still has a 90% penetration chance on a slick, which is pretty bonkers. We're not quite at that stage yet in the white where this is necessary, and there is still plenty of players using class 4, so M80 should do you just fine. But there's always the option of making and stacking a few rounds of M61 in the tops of your bags as 1212 12 progresses if you feel that you're running into better equipped players in highly contested areas. 
So in summary, I really like the SR25 and always have done, because it gives a relatively wide range of options for modding at various stages and is accessible a little earlier than the M1A, which partly relies on the Mechanic 3 SAS barter to start getting really good. As usual, if you learned something, please consider dropping a like and a comment to see when I'm streaming. You can follow me on Twitter and Twitch. Check out our Scav Talk podcast in the links below, and as always, have fun in your raids. They're just the one, I guess. That that guy does not look geared. By any means. Okay. Let's go and see what he had nonetheless. Um. E phone. Okay. Well, poor guy. Poor man's just out here trying to make a living, you know? Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Ah! No. Come on. Okay. I thought the guy was like on the far other side. I didn't think he was so close. He went in there. Can I cut him off, do you think? I just lie and wait. <laughs> yes, we can. Just one? <laughs> yeah, just one. <laughs> that was dirty. That was dirty. I feel... Do I feel bad about that? You know what? Not really. Not really. Now we just need to leave. <laughs> Sure is becoming interesting. There's somebody else to the right. I can't go in and loot that. I'll die. I'll definitely die. Only way we're going to do this is if we swing this way, I think. Problem is, there's, there's somebody else here. Was the first guy past? Which one up? Whoa! Shots behind as well now. If I was that guy, I'd come through here. I wouldn't come that way, but you can never rule it out. It's kind of tough. It's getting quite hard to see. Yeah, I think, I don't know, I feel like we just have to kind of bail on, on the bodies, unfortunately. Sadly, we're going to get none of, the, none of the loot on the people. Which kind of sucks, but it's the life of a solo, you know? If you've got nobody to back you up, so if you don't know where they are, then spot the black figure silhouette in black on the black background. You really do. Not like short rubles? No. Dude, we've got four kills.